scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It's possible for God to come to South Africa because of just three people. And men of God, this is not a minister's conference, but let me give you a loving word of caution. Even if God gave you three members, find out which three are those members. Because you can look at only three members and say, I need more. Not knowing that one member is equal to a whole region in South Africa. When the mother of Jacob and Isaac, I mean uh, Jacob and um, Esau, they said they were two nations, not two men. There are men that are not men, oh. No. There are men that are territories. They are systems. They are nations in themselves. Some of you here, you may not know why God seems to be meticulous in his training to you. Your family members can be careless with their lives. He will spare them. But for you, it is because there is a mantle. There is an unction. There is much that depends on your life. There are challenges that never happen to you. Except and unless you are going somewhere. Please sit down. Sit down. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. Shaleso brandiski aparasu brahaskabidia. First Corinthians 16 and verse 9. Please read with me, everybody. One to read. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are there are few you see i told you yesterday there are certain doors that god does not open because the person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a businessman the person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a preacher you have to be a warrior to pass through that door that door once you enter it is not for business again it's not for preaching again you must master the art of warfare commanding victory ah, there's such an anointing in this place help those women those two women please hear me it says a great door every time you see a great door don't just rejoice a great door of business a great door of ministry a great door of opportunity along with it are many adversaries nobody has to hate you since you are not doing anything nobody needs to talk about you since you are not making any mark it's not because you are nice it is because you are not impactful enough you must be trained 
to know how champions retain territories are we together now now watch this when it was time for jesus himself to purchase back the hearts of men even though he was the king of kings and the lord of lords let me show you what he went through are you ready jesus himself is at the last supper with the disciples and then they drink of the cup they eat of the bread and your jesus is led to gethsemane the bible says when he got there he cried and cried and said father if it be thy will i want to make progress my mission is to see that the entire world is saved but let me show you the path of champions that many of you do not see what you see is the glitz and the glamour but i am showing you the pathway that leads to glory there is no throne without a cross jesus christ he prayed three times take this cup off me nevertheless if it be thy will not my will but your will be done you thought the father would say i'm so touched all right no more death he still continued the savior of the world watch this the first fatal thing that happened to him was a betrayal from his treasurer this morning thing again a kiss that should be a sign of love and intimacy was used as a weapon of destruction it is not only evil satan uses to destroy he can use good things managing the pain of being betrayed by someone you invested your resources to which is a sign of your trust and judas looked at him but you ate in my conference yes do you know the pain and then the same people who came for his conferences were putting a crown of thorn on his head but i saw you you ate of that five loaf that's none of my business you are going to die was taken before pontius pilate he had the power to speak and yet he remained silent he was whipped 40 stripes save one i'm showing you how champions become this is a side you may not want to hear if you are talking of enlargement please listen carefully so that at the end of it you will know whether it's a journey worth taking hmm. and then that 33 year old man you know that he was hung without clothes the covering there that you see in movies is just because there are people of all age ranges watching. There was no cloth there. Imagine the man who raised the dead. Imagine the man who fed many. Now becoming an object of mockery. Many people would have said, I knew he used divination. God had caught him now. Be careful when you conclude on people's journeys. Listen. The only thing you owe people going through storms is your prayer. Don't speak in ignorance because you do not even know what season they are going through. This is intelligence, South Africa. Can you hear me? Do not conclude that just because negative things are happening to people, it means God is not with them. No. Remember, it is not always a sin problem. Sometimes it's a destiny journey jesus and they gave him this huge cross many of you are medical practitioners the life of the flesh is in the blood and at this point this man was bleeding every part of his body from head to toe i do not know the kind of excruciating pain pain spiritually pain emotionally pain spiritually pain physically and he carried that cross watch this now as he journeyed on that cross he looked at the woman with the issue of blood watching him but i healed you and she was not even there to help him he looked at jarius but i raised your son said still go 
crucify him and among the many who were pointing their hands he looked at the woman he looked at the man he looked at all the people the tax collectors and they said let his blood be on they were speaking nonsense Jesus was on his way to Golgotha ladies and gentlemen and he was so weak the Bible did not hide his pain with tears and blood he fell he himself could not even arrive at the cross Jesus because at that point the Holy Spirit was not with him again the Holy Ghost had left him at Gethsemane he couldn't die not with the Holy Spirit in him because the Holy Spirit represented the life of God he had to leave him that's why he came back after three days now this was Jesus the man watch this now I want to show you the price to win this territory called your heart so that the next time you want more you need to understand that more takes stamina hallelujah and a man called Simon of Cyrene was instructed to come and take the cross I don't have the time to teach you but prophetically Simon of Cyrene was Africa listen carefully Simon of Cyrene was a black man that was the only continent that said I will help you Jesus now I love every other continent but listen everybody rejected him and one continent said can I help you to get to the cross I may not be able to die for the sins of the world but let me help you that is the reason why that helper is still the continent that will partake of the glory For if you partook of the sufferings of Christ, you must partake of the glory that follows. It is the reason why this is the season of Africa. Because we were the continent that identified with Jesus in his death. Now watch this. When Jesus got to that cross, you would think the people nailing him haven't seen him bleed. They would say, listen, just leave this man, he would die anyway. He had to die on the cross to be a cause. If he had died on the ground, his mission would be aborted because he needed to die on the cross because it is written, cost is he that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what the Bible says. So they nailed him and he was in pain to make matters worse there were two foolish thieves by his left and right you don't want people speaking nonsense when you are in pain and the other guy who was a thief he now began to speak why are you here I thought you were a miracle worker shame on you you can't even help us and the other guy said you better keep quiet we are thieves we were caught stealing this man is innocent and he said this day you will be with me in paradise watch this Jesus Christ himself hanging on that cross he cried Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabachthani Father you have forsaken me you have turned away from me the father looked at Jesus and even the father as compassionate as he is did not allow Jesus to be relieved of that pain of that journey and that warfare and then the Bible tells us that he gave up the ghost. Life died. The king of glory died. You would think that was the end of it. Watch this. Now, Paul is given a picture of what happened after this realm. And the Bible says, because you see, when sinners die, they do not go to heaven. So since Jesus died as sin, he couldn't have gone to the Father. The Bible says he went to Hades, the place of the dead. Paul was shown this in his Pauline epistle. Are we together? And when he went there, he went in the strength of a man. He did not go assisted by the Holy Ghost. No. He went in the strength of man, just like Adam. 
and the Bible says the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow. What is it about bowing? Bowing means acknowledging authority. To acknowledge Satan's authority. And the Bible says that when the legal claims of justice was made, because he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. Is that in your Bible? The moment the price was paid, your Bible, my Bible says, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them. Now, watch this. When he shook off the demons and the cohorts of darkness, he went to Lucifer himself, who collected the keys from Adam, and he said, give me the keys. It's in your Bible. When he collected the keys, he said, I am he that was dead and now is alive. Revelations 1. And I have the keys. Then Apostle Peter now brought another dimension. He went to Hades, the place of the dead. And the Bible said he preached the gospel to the departed saints who were there. Awaiting this redemption. They died in faith. But they never had the opportunity to make that declaration. And when they believed him. He opened the prison gates and said, let's go. It's in your Bible. Now watch this. I can imagine the whole land quiet, women crying, others laughing, others mocking. Shame on Jesus. You wasted three years of our passion. We thought you were the one who would dethrone Herod, Caesar to become king. And then one morning, hmm, the Bible says... There was a noise an angel came and rolled away the stone and sat on it and the king of glory your king of glory watch this you would think when he was done with satan that was the end of it now it was time to return to the earth psalm 24 but the gates refused to open those gates and doors you see because Jesus was about to do something on earth that had never been done. Watch this. When someone leaves the earth, someone in the earth has to call him back. Are we together? That is the law. It has to be a human who calls someone from the realm of the spirit back. When Lazarus died, remember? It took Jesus the man. It took Ezekiel the man. To call back life into the bones now who was calling jesus that he was returning back so the gate said no we are not opening there is nobody on earth who is calling you that's why they ask the question who is this king of glory he said lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory may come in now listen please don't miss this don't miss this don't miss this this is an issue of ownership because psalms 24 verse 1 starts by saying the earth is the lord the fullness so it's an it's a contention for space and ownership watch this please listen i don't want you to miss this the gates said we only open at the command of someone who is in the earth who calls because that was how God created it but now there is no man in the earth who is calling your name and there was a response to those gates he said this man is the Lord strong and mighty then he says the Lord mighty in battle mighty in battle and the gates open and he triumphed he walked back into his domain because if you are really the owner if it is yours you should have the power to go out and come in every other king who claimed land when he went out he could not come in but here is this other king, the king of glory. He went out of the earth of his own volition and returned back. When he returned back, he was alive by the spirit. Now watch this. 
when he resurrected now he could be ascended to heaven so that that coronation service would now happen to him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool are we together now the bible says that a name was given to him that name means an office this is how he got the name the name was his all the while but now it was his without man it's like you being a professor but because you are a professor alone you will strip yourself and go back to the elementary school and start again but this time around you do not want the phd for you alone you want the phd together with everybody you love so that the day they give you a phd they see a phd appearing in every other person's name that's what jesus did now i want you to listen very carefully if jesus himself was not exempted from battles that's the point i'm driving i'm showing you all the things you thought is it that jesus did not pray is it that jesus did not fast is it that jesus did not submit to mentorship what was his sin that he went through these battles it was not about a sin problem it was about a destiny problem i wish i can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny i wish i can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence but i would be lying to you there is a price the price for where you are going listen carefully the price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. It is the reason why many people begin to run a marathon when they shoot the gun. Sometimes they are up to 50. Some already know they will not finish. But you find a few people just running, maintaining that tempo. And after hours and hours of running, they are still moving. And at the end, just one person reaches the finish line. And he's done. Let me tell you this. Ask your man of God the storms that he has had to go through in his own life as a testament. I can tell you stories upon stories that will make you cry. This man standing before you is a testament of blood dripping on the altar make no mistakes about it this is a sermon that many people in church they do not like to hear this is why we claim many things that never happen because not everything in the spirit is a gift there are realms that are rewards there are rewards for enduring it says that he that endures to the end will receive a crown and a white stone hallelujah read about abraham do you know what it meant to be barren for 25 years? Then on top of that, your maid now has a child. And then on top of that, your child is born. And when he's 12 years, God says, go and kill him. Not let him be killed. You kill him. The Bible says he got up early. You would think that the buried, the 25 year barrenness problem would be the last challenge Abraham would ever have. No. Abraham, look at the trouble that came with Lot. Look at all the troubles that happened. How about the young man Joseph? What wrong did the young man do? He just went to bed like you did and had a dream. I saw the sun, I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me and the first trouble in his life came from his brothers. They threw him in a well. I wondered what he was saying in that well. Lord, what am I doing here? I love you. When you love the Lord and yet you are in a well, I will tell you what to do shortly. I hope this message is blessing you. There are some cups you don't pray to pass over you. You only pray for grace to drink it. 
but if it is to sit down remember the disciples were trying to lobby politically for a position on Jesus' left and right and the mother came you know women came and said look my sons are here would you consider them Jesus said the space is available but here's the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism all the disciples who said I will go with you go and find out what happened to them Peter who was in a rush to say no I, I won't deny you indeed this thing called destiny and this thing called enlargement is not a Pentecostal issue it's not just an issue of saying yes I will go it's wonderful but I need you to really understand is the reason why so many people profess it sincerely and yet never come there it's not because God is unjust ladies and gentlemen this is the world of men and if you do not build stamina or capacity there are many doors that God will keep closed to help you as an act of his love for you because he has vetted you and said listen I can't bring this burden on this person you can't go through it when they brought Joseph out of the well I'm sure Joseph will say this is the end of it thank you Jesus it's over only for him to know that he's been sold for 30 shekels my brother selling me okay fine he now goes to the house of Potiphar and then God begins to bless him the Bible strangely tells him he's a prosperous man favored of God I'm sure he was comfortable things were already working out now and then here comes this woman are we together she comes to him what was his sin he was handsome what if what is good in your life becomes a reason for your pain his dream took him to the well his looks put him to the prison just because I am a handsome man when has beauty become a sin and the wife came and listen carefully they had every evidence against Joseph not every evidence is evidence because clearly her cloth was with him how could you deny now and he took Joseph to the prison now listen carefully the prison is where both good and bad people meet don't conclude on anybody you see in the prison the moment you find people in a prison be careful because the prison is the launching pad read your Bible for glory whether you are Paul and Silas whether you are Jesus yourself are we together whether you are Joseph after the prison the moment you see anyone in the prison start celebrating listen what I'm teaching you for many of you you will not need this message now is after two years from now you will look for this tape in a hurry and listen to it one night and say now I understand you don't need light in the day you only need light in the night now please listen carefully Joseph is in the prison together with other people if they told you who is the person in the prison is all these criminals but there was somebody who was a king there he was about to be literally the possessor of the entire Egypt and he was there and when the time was full he had endured do you know the test he went through in prison the test of joy the test of relevance the test of value that he never counted God unfaithful he saw two people his own contemporaries sad and he said your countenance what's wrong and he began to interpret the dreams and then the king called one and he said please when you go to the king advocate my innocence and the guy said don't worry I have your back covered he thought it would be after 24 hours they'll say suddenly you are innocent come out two days became two weeks became two months became two years how could I be so close to victory 
and one man's carelessness adds two more years the guy forgot but did he really forget no prophecy was playing out when it was time for him to come out of the prison listen you do not know why God kept him in that prison let me tell you one of the reasons why God kept Joseph in that prison he did not keep him there he hid him there the kind of glory Joseph had they would have killed him before the day of his rising what looks like a negative thing Moses when you find yourself being abandoned in Egypt you are hidden you did not miss your path there are many times God uses negative circumstances God does not cause evil but there are many times he can use it as a tool if he finds room to bear his glory he can hide you in the midst of circumstances that distract you from exposing yourself too early so that you can last until the time prophecy is ready to release you to announce you are we together and the king had a dream and the heavens were shot over the wise men and the sorcerers and the necromancers and the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon that night if he had known that would be his last night in prison that by the next day he would be a prime minister do you know if the man remembered to tell pharaoh about joseph they would have brought joseph out and he would have gone back to potiphar's house They would have said all right sorry for everything compensate him no labor for two weeks after that he can continue we know that he was in the prison two years plus the years he spent before his encounter with the wine presser we don't know how long that was but he remained there there are mountains there are challenges that sometimes can last listen to me you must obtain the staying power the staying power one time i was praying for a couple this is a true story they were trusting god for the fruit of the womb and please sit down when i was praying for them and the lord opened my eyes and i saw three children running around true story running around and playing and then the next time they entered a car all of them as a family and they were going somewhere and they had a ghastly motor accident and i saw that everybody died and then i came back to myself i said how many children do you have he said we don't have any children you've never had children yes I said okay how long have you been married maybe eight nine years thereabout never <clears throat> at best i've had miscarriages then i understood the vision I said what you call delay was God preserving a kind of pain from you listen beloved people there are many times in your life that your pain is your gift this is a difficult message to understand but pain can be a gift if you get to heaven today and you are looking for Jesus there are many ways to know him if you use the crown alone there are many elders who have crowns tell everyone to lift their hands there is a scar that only Jesus has what was an object of shame yesterday is now the symbol of his glory and royalty there are times that warriors will be summoned and called and your scar will be the only reason to be allowed to pass through certain doors if you have not gone through certain things even when they call for employment on certain offices they say we need certain experience you must have you had an experience with ABC then they say you can go Joseph came out of that prison not with the plans of remaining i'm sure he was out to just interpret and go back and when he spoke to the king in a moment genesis 40 
Genesis 41. He was exalted in one day. One day. He said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that I am above you. But as far as administration over Egypt is concerned, it will be at your word. And immediately he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And he was given great possessions. I wonder what happened the day the exalted Joseph saw Potiphar's wife. Hello, madam, how are you? Hello, sir. What you meant for me for evil. It was a journey. He told his brothers. Listen. Before you start your journey to greatness, there is a scripture that you must keep at the back of your mind. For we know that all things, not some things, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. I'm not a chef. But many of you cook. There are ingredients that you do not want to taste before you put in the food. It is very inconveniencing. When you are peeling your onion, sometimes tears will come out of your eyes. That is the price you have to pay for being so close to it. Are we together? Watch how you make a lovely meal. Sometimes you add sugar. Sometimes you add this. Sometimes you add that. And you already know what you are trying to combine. Sometimes you have to leave certain ingredients under fire for a long time. There are others who don't need that much fire. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you close the pot. Then you open it again. And what you have. When you put it on a beautiful tray. And you serve. When people taste it. They say my God. What is this? But find out how it was made. There are other things, chicken and the rest, you have to marinate for hours. Is that true? And live there. Lonely path. All things work together. He didn't say all good things. All tears. All pain. They work together for the good of them. That love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes for many years in ministry I had the resources to buy a vehicle but the Lord would not allow me to buy a vehicle I was I cannot tell you how many times the Lord made me empty my accounts and I did things that did not make sense. There was a time my account was hacked and quite some serious money was taken out of it. I went to the bank to meet with the managers and all the people there. Now, I was a righteous man by the grace of God and I love the Lord. I sat there at the meeting and the people, look, you have all the people who stay close to you. They must write a statement, you know, police and all of that. And I said, no, these people are sincere. Say, well, that's none of our business. We are doing our work. And I sat down there in the midst of all of that. You can't imagine how the millions I had lost. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, son, what are you doing here? In the middle of a meeting. I said, I mean, my money, they just use these guys just. And the Lord said, who owns it? And I said, you are the one I'm a steward. Listen, 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 listen. And he said, if it, if it is true that you've given me everything, get up from that meeting and walk away. God is my witness. I looked at them and I said, all right, thank you for everything. Let the money go. No, 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 no. This is our reputation. I said, listen, this is my money. I have chosen to forget about everything. And that's it. When I walked out of that bank, there was a joy that I could not explain. There are some things you cannot understand until you are in certain situations. That 
joy. You would think that would be the end of it. Many years ago, it was in the seminary. I was diagnosed of a very strange fungal infection. It started eating up my head. It was a very serious situation. I thought it was just a little, maybe some issue that antibiotics and the rest will solve the problem. But it metamorphosed into something very serious. I got to a point where they could not allow me sit in front because it was inconveniencing people. No matter how early I came for a program, I would have to go to the back. Now, the students love me, sincere people, but there was a time I had to wait. While people are at the dining hall, I would have to wait. After food is shared, my portion will be brought for me. They prepared a solution that I would have to rub on my head in the morning and then soap or something in the night. If I forgot to put it one day, it will show. Sometimes there will not be water and I would have to stand in the rain. Look, let me tell you the truth. Don't claim titles, so I am apostle, I am prophet. Let your scars. He said, let no man trouble me. Hallelujah. I remember the pain and the discomfort. One time they, I went to the lab and they had to take some sample. It was so painful to culture it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? You waited. You waited. You waited. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart, that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.